this is a video response to LV's video about the Intercontinental title match uh, deal at WrestleMania. And I've heard the same thing for a long time. I've heard a lot of people talk about, oh, well, why isn't there an Intercontinental title match? The bastards, they need to put one on. And uh, I was just going to give some explanations on why that is. Uh, I think the reason why fans, myself included, say there should be one or why there isn't one or, you know, comment on the lack of a icy title match at WrestleMania is because for many years we were watching WrestleMania and the Intercontinental title was a focal point. Well, let me rephrase that. It was an important part of the WrestleMania package, if you get what I mean. Uh, if you look at some of the Intercontinental title matches, not so much the star ratings because sometimes I don't really pay too much attention to them, but if you look at the way the story between the Intercontinental champion and the contender was built, and then it would conclude or it would uh, continue or progress from WrestleMania. Like if you look at um, Randy Savage and Ricky Steamboat, they had this big long feud beforehand, which heated up when Savage dropped the ring bell on his throat, and then Steamboat was off for months, and they built it up as a big grudge match at WrestleMania, and the ultimate way that Steamboat could get the... Uh, if Savage has come up and since by winning the Intercontinental title, it also happened to be one of the best matches at WrestleMania. And I'm talking too fast. Sorry. Uh, if you also look at the Summer not SummerSlam, what am I talking about? WrestleMania Roddy Piper Bret Hart match. That was another match that was very, very, very memorable. Uh, actually, it's probably considered Piper's best singles match he's ever had. I probably would agree with that. And the match had a lot of drama and people, you know. It looked like Piper was going to turn on him at some point during the match and uh, bend the rules and go back to his old rule-breaking ways. And it was a good competitive match which had a story to it and actually made the Intercontinental title mean something. In 93, that WrestleMania, not so much. Uh, going back to when the Honky Tonk Man had it and defended it against Beefcake, yeah, that match was an absolute dud. But what you need to remember is Honky Tonk Man was amidst a long intercontinental title reign and no one had beaten him and he just got the belt off of Steamboat I think or he just all got awarded the belt I can't remember it was one or the other someone will correct me it's the internet after all but um he was this big hill champion in the intercontinental title division had the belt for a long time and people wanted to see him lose it eventually he did lose it to Ultimate Warrior who was the setup guy because they wanted to build Warrior up for the world title at the time so by the time warrior did lose the belt and you know had a feud with well i've really got to check my stats here because i'm doing this like that by the time warrior did lose the belt he lost it to rick rude and that was considered quite a big deal at that time so the intercontinental title meant quite a lot at wrestlemania and the matches involving that belt meant quite a lot and it was part of the mania package then when you move forward like in the 90s Obviously, you have the storyline with Shawn Michaels and Razor Ramon. It's not so much that it was the Great Ladder match, and it was the Great Ladder match, but they had the story too. You had Razor Ramon, who'd won the Intercontinental title, Shawn Michaels, who was suspended and never lost the belt. Shawn Michaels comes back with his version of the title, clocks Ramon and says, I'm the real champion. Razor Ramon, no, I'm the real champion. And now you've got this storyline and this angle that had built up for months to decide who the real Intercontinental champion was. So... The belt seemed important, and it culminate, culminated at WrestleMania with the ladder match, which everybody praises, and rightly so. In 95, they had a storyline with Jarrett and Ramon, where Jarrett stole the belt. Well, not stole the belt, but, you know, yeah, he got a cheap win over Ramon at Royal Rumble. So they were building up a match from January onward to April. And, no, it wasn't a great match. It was an okay match. But the point is, they made it, and then they, they gave it time. They invested time in it to make the match seem like it had some importance uh and then i think as the years have progressed the belt didn't mean as much sugar i've just fallen off my chair i think as the years have progressed the belt hasn't meant as much as uh, you know the way wrestling television has just changed and wwe has just changed so much and i think now newer fans won't really be too you know fussed if they don't see the intercontinental title now being defended at mania but I think a lot of older fans who probably watch the WrestleManias and you know from kind of my generation would be like, well, why isn't the Intercontinental title being defended? Why is the belt not being defended? Uh, I mean, nowadays I think the Intercontinental title doesn't mean as much. I think that's partly why they don't defend it. 
or sorry, use it as much as uh, they do in the past WrestleManias. I think they've got things like Money in the Bank, which they want to use now as a stepping stone to the title, or they want to use things like the uh, what's the other thing? They've got they, you know, and they've got all the championships as well. They've got the ECW title, which kind of means nothing, but they try to do something with it. And then they've got the US title as well, which usually gets defended. So anyway, that was just a quick video response. Uh, quite like your vids anyway. I probably talked way too fast. Uh, so <laughs> I hope you could keep up with me and my rambling. Cheers. Thanks.